The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication, podcast publishing made easy, Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. The events at Black Tor. When young policeman Jamie is posted to a small village in the Yorkshire Moors, he and his wife Pam are anticipating a nice, quiet life. But the arrival of a curious letter sparks a terrifying chain of events. Aided by F.R. Probert, a Dominican friar, the duo come face to face with the forces of darkness, as they investigate a sinister cult of murderous devil worshippers. Now for an episode of the thriller The Events at Black Tor. The Events at Black Tor by Roy Clark. Events at Black Tor, Episode 2, The Unquiet Dead, in which Jamie and Father Probert, who have already brushed with violent death, find further evidence of the forces of darkness. The jury soon made its mind up. I can't see why not. Well, maybe so. Have you decided on your verdict? We have, sir. Would you tell the court what it is? <clears throat> we find the deceased John Willis Anderson took his own life whilst the balance of his mind was disturbed. And the court will record that verdict. Thank you, you are discharged. Day. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. For we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I somehow expected Father Probert to be taking the service. The well, rabbit wasn't a Catholic, apparently. So it'll be one of his demarcation disputes. I wonder why he became involved, then. Association of ideas, I expect. Our own vicar's a bit too rural England for the psychic phenomena. There aren't many here. Oh, I expected more. He wasn't exactly local boy makes good, but he must have had lots of cronies. I mean, why aren't they here? Perhaps too scared to come. Oh, give over. I mean, why should they be scared? It's a queer business. All right, so it's queer, but it's not as weird as all that, is it? Yeah. <laughs> There's an atmosphere here you can cut. That's a funeral, love. Any funeral. It'll be different back home over a cup of tea. Oh, I suppose so. Is that poor woman his sister? What? Oh, yeah. I wonder what she thinks of it all. It was hard to tell. They call her Daft Maggie. She looks so thin. Oh, well, it looks as if it's all finished now. I'm going to wander over there now. They've gone. I'll come with you. Well, I'd just like to, uh, well, you know, uh, throw a handful of dirt, that's all. Just a gesture. You're lovely, Ripley, aren't you? It's a kind gesture. You'll not like the lack of space, will you? Not much room for a poacher. You know, blokes like him spend most of their lives breaking the minor laws. Regulars. The sort of Bobby doesn't mind. Well, not really, no. I'm sure he'd appreciate a farewell from the law. Go on, throw it in. I want more room than this. You see? I told you you'd feel better. Yes, I do. Of course you do. You can't go all extrasensory perceptual in a police house. It's against nature. They're probably against police regulations too, come to think of it. Conduct prejudicial to good order and police discipline. Do you want another cup? No, it's time I had a ride outside. I've still got a beat to patrol. I'll have the natives going berserk, brewing their own ale and nicking each other's sheep. Maybe that's why they weren't at the funeral. They're careering up and down the hills in some wild, sensual frenzy. Oh yes, I can just see that round here. 
Madly gay they are round here. I can't even remember a smile. Will you be long? Oh, a couple of hours. Mm. Well, I'll have a ride as far as Craddock's Edge. I mean, somebody's got to tell them Queen Victoria's dead. Oh. And police house scarp end. Oh, hello, Sarge. What, tomorrow? Well, I wasn't, but I will. Afternoon? Yeah. Yeah, of course I don't mind. Well, get me off the prairie for a bit. As long as you don't mind sheep dung all over your office liner. <laughs> yeah, OK. Yeah, will do. Bye. What was that? Oh, he's got to go into DHQ tomorrow. Wants me to cover from at the station for a couple of hours. Oh, you are an up-and-coming bright young thing. Well, be a change. Hey, look, I'll have to go. Well, that's not a police bike. It's Father Probert. Oh, Lord. That medieval rig out on a motorbike. I don't know what he's like on the collections, but he can certainly beg the transport. He's coming in. Enormous, isn't he? You know, I sometimes feel a bit conspicuous in this outfit, but compared to him, I'm CID. Well, don't just stand there. Help me clear away. Put these over there. Come on, move! You know, he's trouble, is this bloke. With the best intentions in the world, he's trouble. Hello, Father. Hello, lads. Is that policeman of yours at home? Come in, yes, he's in. He's through here, Father. Jamie's in here. Good day, Moss James. Ah, oh, Father. If it's me that's making you fidget, you can pack it in. There's nothing up these voluminous sleeves. Oh, sorry, Father. Well, sit down. Will you have some tea? Hmm. Yes, I will. Good. I shan't be a minute. It's made. Uh, you were at the funeral? Uh, yeah. Yeah, there weren't many of that. No, there wouldn't be. Well, I thought you might have been there. About the time they were burying him, I was saying a mass for him. That makes me a well-wisher, if not exactly a fully paid-up member, No. Yeah, I suppose it does. Did you wonder why there was nobody there? I did. Ah, good. The sugars are there, Father. Uh, thank you, Les. If Rabbit wasn't a Catholic, how did you become involved, Father? When I was a lad, my family used to holiday not far from here. He did odd jobs for my father. He taught me how to snare. After I took my vows, of course, we lost touch. I'd nearly forgotten him. He traced me through my family, and he came to see me. And that wasn't easy for him. Expert as he was round here, the rest of the world was a bit overpowering for him. He couldn't read or write, of course, and if you can imagine, it took a bit of a determination. Well, he found me. He had a drink and a bite to eat, the usual embarrassed reminiscences, and then suddenly he was telling me this incredible story. I didn't have to prompt him. I sat there and it poured out like lancing a saw. His old accent got thicker and thicker and his stained old teeth kept reappearing and I've never doubted his sincerity for a minute. Nor did I suspect his sanity. So what could I do but believe him? And you still do? Yes, I do. How much did Rabbit tell you? I mean, what exactly did he know? He knew that there was a group operating in this area and performing hellish ceremonies. A few he'd seen himself, others he'd heard of. He knew why old Walt had been murdered and he knew why they'd taken the head. He didn't know who they were? No. It's very little, really, isn't it? Until you realise that the great big fact is to know about them at all. This is the thing they can't tolerate. They depend so much on secrecy. Rumours they might welcome as providing the right climate of fear, but definite concrete knowledge of their activities they can't permit outside the group. Can I read you this? One of the indictments against Susan Barker was that she, feloniously, did take up a skull out of a certain grave in the burying ground of the parish church aforesaid, being part of the body of a certain deceased man lately buried there, with intent to use the said skull in certain evil and devilish arts. When was that? 1616. You see, you've had a supernatural problem round here for some time. Well, that's going back a bit, isn't it? I mean, they all believed it then. The problem of doubt... Then listen to this. A peasant drawing water from a well was horrified to find a recently severed arm. When the authorities drained the well, they discovered a number of mutilated human remains. An investigation proved that several graves in a nearby cemetery had been disturbed. The caretaker of the cemetery was arrested, and in his house were found books dealing with the black arts. Would you like to guess the date of that one? Same period. October 1931, Finland. All right, Father, so there's always been some... In to... that same investigation, the Finnish police appealed to Scotland Yard for help in tracing the activities of a society of devil worshippers with members all over Europe and a high priest in London. So they delude themselves. Then believe in that. It's enough. 
because those delusions, as you prefer to call them, result in solid, concrete physical crimes. Don't you see, Jamie? It doesn't matter that you can't share their beliefs. If they are doing these ghastly things, then it is your concern. Well, certainly. If there was any evidence of that sort of thing... Well, you're the lad to find that out. Is there a way you can do it without involving anyone else at this stage? Oh, it's possible. Well, brief details, anyway, going back about, well, ten or a dozen years. When? Well, tomorrow, as it happens, I've got to go into the section station for the afternoon. I should be out on my own so I can get the old occurrence book out. Well, they'll only be the barest facts. I mean, all the statements and reports will have gone to DHQ. But there'd be enough to show the kind of things we're looking for? Well, yeah. If anything like that's been happening, it'll be there. Er, uh, you'll uh, be on your own, you said. <laughs> all right. All right, if you should happen to turn up about 4.30, say, I should be able to give you a progress report. Well, it's a bit thin, Father. Just the one in all that time and not a thing for years now. Hmm, there should have been more. Bear in mind they're not seeking to advertise, but there should be more. They need certain bits and pieces for their ceremonies. Anyway, what have you found? 21st of June, willful damage to cemetery. At 9.10am this date, a telephone message received from the Reverend Brooks, Vicar of St. Stephen's, to the effect that during the night, damage had been occasioned to certain graves in the churchyard. Headstone had been toppled, ornaments removed and recent graves levelled. PC-412 Riddler and PS-390 Waters to the scene. Apparently no one was ever convicted. What about the two officers? Riddler's retired, uh, Waters posted. Mm, that's handy. What about the vicar? Oh, he's still here, part of the landscape. Well, we'd better find out what he remembers. Are you sure it's worth it? I mean, it could be an ordinary case of vandalism. That's what it was supposed to look like, to distract attention. From what? Those levelled graves. I'll bet you they were more than levelled. I must confess I don't quite understand your interest. I could recount it equally well in the vicarage. Are you certain you don't care for a whiskey, Father? Uh, thank you, no. I'm afraid I don't keep any beer. My tastes don't run in that direction. I've always been a quality rather than a quantity man. The essence of the spirit rather than the outward manifestation. An almost unassailable moral standpoint. Yes, it, it's rather a fundamental of mine. It enables me, for instance, to feel not one whit less clerical for this collar and tie than does your own rather more um, uh, conspicuous attire. An impeccable tie, naturally. Mm, even exclusive. Or would you insist that our duties are only to the masses? Uh, now... This was the place, I think. Of course, the graves were new then. They all look very similar now. But it was these, I'm sure. It was more than one. Oh, yes, yes. It looked like a circus had been through. Uh, do you ride, by the way, Father? Yes, as a matter of fact. Oh, I see, really. Oh, that's splendid. A wonderful relaxation, I find. I keep a pair. It's just the place around here, of course. Uh, what's your mount, Father? A BSA 500cc. Uh, y yes. Uh, yeah, I, I thought you weren't the type. Uh, what exactly can I do for you, gentlemen? A little information, Vicar. Inform a Catholic. Very exhilarating. Uh, tell us what you remember about it. I remember no one was ever caught, Constable. An event all too typical of our enlightened modern climates. Young louts going about unpunished. Did you have any reason to suspect it might be Youth's vicar? Who else? I suppose one would be expected to applaud them for having the imagination to graduate from cinema seats. If you are finally onto them after all this time, I shall still press charges. I shall want them prosecuting whoever they are, of no matter what denomination, Father. So if you've come here to plead a case... Uh, I... What did they do? They raised havoc in my churchyard. Sheer hooliganism. Considerable damage. The really appalling thing I remember was the total lack of any regard for the solemnities of the place. They levelled some graves, didn't they? Kicked them flat, deliberately trampled them. It was like a building site. Soil all over the place. Was it all topsoil? That's a peculiar question. It's important. Well, you've no right to expect me to remember a detail like that after all this time, but I do. I remember thinking it a nuisance. There were quantities of clay around. It stuck to everything. Clothes, boots. Now, that rather suggests that it wouldn't all be topsoil, doesn't it? I gather you think it was more than just an use. I think it possible that the graves were interfered with at a deeper level than was first thought. 
I wonder why it is. As soon as the RCs arrive, one's knee-deep in phenomena. I still don't see what makes you so sure. The date, Jamie, 21st of June. The following night is a big one in their calendar. The night of the Spring Festival. It calls for something special. I'd stake my life one of those graves is empty. It's still no good asking for an exclamation order. You've no real evidence. I agree. Besides, we're not sure exactly which grave. What now, then? So, you're with me. Welcome aboard, Jamie. It's up to you for a while now. A matter of finding their trail. Well, back to square one, then. I'd like to retrace Rabbit's movements on the night he died. It's still unofficial, mind. Absolutely no grounds for taking up police time. Now, don't spoil it. You're sounding like a Protestant again. It's all yours. You're the expert at this stage. Now, where do we start? Rabbit's sister, tomorrow night. I've got to return some of his effects anyway. Tomorrow, then. His knife and... Oh, and there was also a bit of poaching gear. You understand I can't return that. He'll not be needing it. Now it's killed him. I always said it would. I told him. You can't go on killing things, little things. Maggie, do you know who I am? Aye, he said. What did he say? That you'd come to help, but I knew you weren't. I told him there'd be no help till he stopped killing. I could go. He'd laugh at me. Not lately, mind. He didn't laugh lately. Well, why's that? Was he uh, worried about something? He was feared. Sometimes before he went out, others be he came back, but he still killed. He used to leave them there on sink, their little bodies still warm and bonny. What is there that's half so bonny? You could feel how much he had to pay for one day. I could see, but men won't listen. The night before he died, out there in Clane, I saw his funeral. But he wouldn't listen, and so he's dead. Choked with his own snare. What will you do, Maggie? Stay here. With me cat, like old daft women are supposed to do. She's soft, with me any road. And if I watch her, she won't be killing. Not if I watch her. If I'm careful. You're a gentlewoman, Maggie. Bless you for it. Funny ideas. That's the problem of pain she's wrestling with, Jamie. At a level of involvement quite as deep as a theologian's. Hmm. She'd seen the fear in him, obviously. She'd seen all sorts. What was it? Uh, on the night before he died, I saw his funeral. Yes, that was strange. She didn't appear to be given to visions. Well, at least she settled one thing. We know Rabbit never reached home after he left the grapes. So somehow they got him between the pub and here. Ah, but how... He must have been on his guard. Anything suspicious and he'd have disappeared. He could move like a shadow. It would have to be this lane, if anywhere. They'd have to allow for some sort of struggle, however brief. It's the only safe spot between the cottage and the pub. They'd use a vehicle. Or would they? Well, this bogey element puts me off, Father. I don't feel confident with the normal thought processes. What can you rule out with this lot? I mean, for all I know, you could be telling me that they... They took him off on a broomstick. You just provide the detection spot. I'll handle the supernatural when it comes. Right, then. Well, a vehicle. No, I don't think they'd follow him. He'd notice. No. No, they'd wait. Here in this lane. It's narrow, so that should mean at least one wheel on the grass verge. Well, it's been a bit dry lately, but there still might be a mark. Look, you take that side. I'll do this. Uh... What are we looking for, exactly? For well, anything. Any mark at all. Just give us a shout. The trouble is, it'll be dark soon. Jamie, come here. What is it? Was this his dog? Poor little mutt. Yeah, that was his. He never went anywhere without it. Well, that clinches it. He was killed. He'd never have done this. I mean, what a vicious swine. They're... Well, they haven't just killed it. They're... That's the kind of malice we're going to be up against. Well, it'd be a pleasure. What's that tied to it? It's a warning. They call it the witch's ladder. The knots on the rope represent the number of days left to the victim. 
It doesn't look much like a ladder in this case, since there's only one knot. A warning? To all who listen to the rumours and believe. They couldn't hang it round Rabbit's own neck, of course. That might have invited awkward questions at the inquest. So they hung it to his terrier and left it where it would be seen eventually by someone. And the warning's clear enough. The dog and his master both dead. Yeah, well, it must have been seen. I wonder why no one's reported it. To you? <laughs> it wouldn't go near you, Jamie, not after this. Aye, they're a close lot anyway. You can't drag things out of them. I think the woman may have told us something. Who, oh, Maggie? Yes, more than we thought. I think she saw them the night he disappeared. I think she saw them in the lane here waiting. Though, of course, she wouldn't know what they were doing. You mean... The night before he died, I saw his funeral. Yeah. Yeah, but she said the night before he died. Now, did she? Or did she mean in her dialect, on the night he died before he died? Uh, They they use that kind of construction round here. It's it's possible. And if it was that same night, whatever she saw here in the lane was probably them. I I still don't see what... She saw the vehicle. Now, the kind of vehicle that prompts us to say, look, there's a funeral. You, you, you think she saw a house? Why not? Anyway, we'll check. Well, it'd be a handy thing for him to have. Who's going to question what's in that sort of box? And if they didn't want to use a coffin, well, there's always the hidden compartment underneath where they shove the unceremonial stiffs. But you don't just hire one of those. I mean, you, well, not self-drive anyway. No. It would have to mean an undertaker with some funny habits. Well, we might as well begin locally. Who have you got? Funeral directors. Let's see, uh, well, it's two. A (laughs) co-op? That's not really likely, is it? No, uh, old-fashioned but hardly satanic. Uh, Who else? John Eddie Brown. He does a bit of everything, including thieving, we think. Now, he's much more likely. Uh, It fits, you know. It would explain, for instance, why there's been so few graves tampered with. You mean... Who needs to dig? Why not just not bury him in the first place? God, this one's looking at all right. Hey, count me in for my turn on watch. Well, you're going to lose some sleep, Father. I think it'll be his night journeys that will repay our interest. We're all going to lose sleep till this thing's over. Well, come on, then. Look, we'll have another word with Maggie. If she can lend us a shovel, we can bury this dog. I don't get too close. As long as we don't lose him... I must say you're well disguised. This rattletrap seems very unpolice-like. It's warmer than that damn bike. Thinks. Where's a rising young policeman going to get a shabby van like this? I have my contacts. Hey, look. He's turning right. There's not much out that way, either. He's going somewhere and with a coffin. Oh, I'm just grateful for the break in monotony. I wasn't looking forward to another wasted night watching his bedroom light go out. It might still turn out to be legit. Which is more than could be said for our little outing. Don't you believe in lights, or is this just another novel feature of our carriage? <laughs> Don't chicken out at this stage, Father. It's a good job we're off the tourist routes. And mind you, they do tell me there was a car through here last March. Aye, aye. Aye, there he goes. What is it? It's the entrance to a one-time stately home. It's an old folks' rest home now. Private affair, very plush, they say. Uh, for the aged and well-heeled, who also die, apparently. Just the same as the poor folk. Doesn't give you much encouragement, does it? Look, I'm going on past. We'll wait on the other side, then assuming he'll be going back the way he came, he's not likely to see us. I think we're wasting our time anyway. It's probably a straightforward no-monkey business trip. This time, we'll try again. He's a long time, isn't he? You see, there could be several things to do. Oh, here he is. There's at least someone. Yes, it's him. I suppose the coffin's full now. I expect so. I'm inclined to think we're on to something. Now, he's alone. Now, he wouldn't be, would he, if his errand was routine? I mean, his burdens are always heavy. There must be someone who normally helps him, even on night calls. Hey, he's turning right. He's not going back home. Where's that lead to? I know how much. Well, there's a farmhouse come pub. The traveller's rest. <laughs> a bit late for a pint. Well, the landlady's got a bit of a reputation. He's not really dressed for courting, is he? We mustn't lose him now, Jamie. I want to see exactly what happens to that coffin. Everything. And push it as close as you dare. Right. That's not just oil that's burning. 
I'm beginning to detect a whiff of the fires of hell. The hearse is in that barn affair. Come on. Come on here, boy. Whatever feed up dung of yours. Right. I'm going inside. Suppose he comes back. We'll hear him. Why do farmers never oil their hinges? You want me to risk a quick look with a torch? Yes, it's better than falling over everything. Uh, just a touch now. Yes, yeah, that'll do. Yeah. Give my that petrol tin. At least the coffin's still in the house. Yes, but what's inside the coffin? What do you think they've... They were in here quite a while. They weren't carrying anything when they came out and went into the house. No, but there's more than one door to this place. Now, I want to look inside that coffin, Jamie. Or rather you than me. The Temple of the Holy Spirit, Jamie. Well, not in the films I've seen. Now give me a hand with this door. Now, if you'll hold it, I'll get inside. Uh, uh, I think you'll have to come on in, Jamie. Steady this lid. This is definitely beyond the call of duty. <laughs> right. Have you got it? There's only a finger hold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all right. I'll raise it when I give the word. Just gently now. Right. Now I'm going to raise it my side. Do you want the torch? Uh, don't risk it again. No, I'll have to feel in. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. What is it? Pass me the lid to my side. All right, I have it. Let go. What was it? What's wrong? Feel for yourself. Put your hand in and feel. It's empty. Yes, but what else? What? Wait, it's warm. It's still warm. That was episode two of The Events at Black Tor by Roy Clark.